Well, <clears throat> in my opinion, the, the major problem to preserving uh, what this uh, last two centuries is doing, uh, since uh, we use uh, photography, cinematography, television, and any other information con connected with the, um, if they are optical or digital format or photochemical, whatever, is very, 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 very important. So any kind of system is welcome. My fear is, uh, you know, <clears throat> in the film era, uh, there was invented something very simple, the um, civil master separation. So the chance to pull out uh, the similar system that uh, Larry was explaining before, the three primary or complementary color in, 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 in a black and white uh, material. Why the black and white material was much more um, possible to preserve? Because black is silver. Silver do not fade. The main problem that the silver master separation had for a long time, because the material itself, the film, was having some kind of shrinking or some kind of scratching or whatever. Uh, when they moved into polyester film, the silver master separation was the best solution till the digital era. Why I've said digital era? Because uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, during the um, uh, our seminar on Wonder Wheel, most of the people uh, really believe that they do digital, they do something permanent, which is not uh, true at all. If the digital information is not connected with the optical information, something that is very physical and inscribed, the sculpture practically in the material, is not permanent at all. Practically, um, we mentioned two other systems, DOTS and PQIL. The PQIL is uh, using a kind of similar uh, system of uh, um, civil master separation, practically transferring digital information on film. And, um, and it's supported by Kodak because Kodak produced film. And uh, with all the mistakes the Kodak did in, uh, in, uh, in many, many years that they went to the a good management, uh, uh, practically they tried to do everything is possible to preserving printing films. Um, I was in Rochester a few months ago and uh, compared to when I did my first visit in 2001, today I used to cry to go to Kodak company because there was an incredible, incredible structure, the major company that they have, all the incredible technology. Today they work in uh, very few days uh, a week and, uh, and they don't, they, they just waiting for some kind of uh, order in order to, to do some material. George Eastman is suffering in his tomb for what they arrive into, um, uh, change the, the, the great invention they did in, in, in a recording an image on, on an emulsion. DOTS was uh, a Kodak system. I was in 2001 in Rochester, invited by your Gagin. I don't know if you know, you know your Gagin. Mm -hmm. He was the, the, um, practically the chair of the motion picture industry. And uh, because he wants to, like you done, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me here today, because I really do care about this problem. Uh, some of new invention that the, the Kodak did, and uh, they show me uh, some kind of material that they were using to inscribing with laser beam on, on this material, some digital information, optical. So probably you can see it. They were excavated like a sculpture in the kind of material that was now uh, proven that, that can be deteriorated. The, all the tests they did, at least they were lasting 500 years, but they cannot do any more tests on top of that. Unfortunately, the management of Kodak didn't understand the great chance that they have to use those kind of uh, invention. 
not only for the archival, but they can use for any passage of the film, like, like a normal film, like putting in the cartridge into the camera and, and, and using in the editing in, in visual effect everything. So practically, DOTS has those kind of um, delayed to develop. Um, the problem uh, that I can see that unless that uh, your material it become uh, something that really can be more um, futuristically uh, proven that they can last for much longer time, uh, this can be a major problem. And uh, I, I wish in that uh, you can find a way that uh, it, it, it one system they can become uh, um, a kind of standard system to use it. Uh, I was wishing so much that um, uh, all the uh, uh, concept, the idea, the people that put in all the effort into do this kind of thing get together. Uh, they, they, they can find something together in order to really, they can become something um, they is proved that they really can last any digital or image information for a really long time, and they can become a kind of starter system. Otherwise, I'm afraid that uh, there are so many different uh, chances uh, that they become, um, which one will be possible that in the future can be reproduced, those kind of information. You already mentioned in your system that you have to re uh, vitalize the system in order to um, update uh, this information in in a certain amount of time. Well, it's it's not so much. I, I don't I don't think of it. It's just a, probably it's, it, probably you haven't done a good thing to invite me here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I want to I want to do all my uh, wishing for your system. They can be find something that can become sure for. Um, uh, prove that it can be really a system that I will uh, love to give you all my movie, you know, to transfer <laughs> all the movie in that system. Something that really can we can believe, unless the, the digital information do not become really optical, is no permanent at all. Well, but the thing is, is that is my microphone on? By the way, it is okay. You can. But, okay. But the uh, the thing is, Vittorio, is is that, you know, we, we both coincidentally work at the same facility at Technicolor Postworks in New York. And the work that you've done there with, with our mutual good buddy, Joe, it's like the decisions that you've made are, you've already decided how you wanted Cafe Society to look, what you wanted, what you want for Wonder Wheel, and you've decided how it is in the various versions. And I just think that you, I hope you're around for an another 78 years, but probably not. And uh, 700, you mean? 700. <laughs> you've already been around for 700. <laughs> but, but, but I, but you're not going to be. And the thing is, is that the idea of going to anything but the same files that you have approved and you and Woody Allen have approved means that someone else is going to interpret it. And I just don't, that's something, I mean, I'm lucky with sound. It's tough to screw up sound, but there's so many ways you can screw up an image. And I just, the idea that if it gets transferred to something else, because I really think that, you know, if the thing will probably last for 30 years, but what they, what they will transfer to hopefully again will be something inert, like a piece of rock that is 20 terabytes and can play your whole movie at the same resolution, the same way you did it. That's a simple transfer, and that doesn't ha involve any creativity. And I don't like giving creativity to people in a machine room in the, in the middle of the night. You know, your creativity is yours. Yeah, but no, something like that was happening for the, with the civil master separation. Uh, that's why always I was putting in my contract that they're supposed to be done, uh, the civil master separation, with the already all the color correction into. So at least, uh, at least, uh, if you are re uh, putting together the three file, you're supposed to have the balance between the three color that were in 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 the shaman the way that you wanna be. Um, I don't see why 
you transfer uh, a digital inter intermediate file, the master, into, for example, dots uh, should be uh, alterated. I don't see why. Well, they just transfer the data. The data doesn't remove. Yeah, but the, but the problem is, I'm oh, sorry. The, the problem that I have w w with dots, and I, look, I know Rob Hummel. Um, he's always been uh, uh, very good with me and Dan Rosen. You know, it seems like a brilliant idea, but they the, the company has been around, I think, since 2008, and I don't think that they've done anything. I don't think they've made any movies, and to me that means, and it's based on work that was at Kodak, as you said, going back, you know, many years that Kodak didn't fully use. And so to me this means it's complicated, and if, and if uh, Cafe Society or Wonder Wheel are backed up to dots, and then in two years they say, nah, we're going out of business, and there's only one reader, they can talk about having a Rosetta Stone at the head of the leader, which they do, but still it's a very complicated process, whereas the humble LTO7 tape, there's hundreds of thousands of decks that can play it, and it's really no mystery in extracting that data. So I think it's very dangerous to in to uh because film it doesn't have that problem film is very universal but dots or or, or or pickle have that potential issue is that you could end up with one or two of these devices and then in 20 years people go right i remember that that was based you know on a very good idea from kodak so i just think that um you know that we should try to keep those files as you approve them as Joe Byrne can record them at, at, at Technicolor and uh, to preserve your decisions. My wish is, uh, is that you three guys get together <laughs> and come out with one system that will make all the, all the three of you happy and everybody else happy. <laughs> That's my wish. Anybody? Because in this way you really come out with, with a system that can be really last forever. And, uh, um, and you know, it, it, it can, can really move forward. I know the problem of dots. Uh, and um, it's only a question of uh, having some, mar some more money. That's all it is. Uh, sorry if I don't tell you what you were expecting from me no. about the no, uh, system. But... Uh, um, I was mm, hoping to realize from your system there was something uh, more permanent that, uh, that I can understand. Because, uh, don't get me wrong, it's good, it's, good, it's better. And I, I love that somebody is doing anyhow whatever system to improve or to try to uh, perform the, any file, any image, any information can be uh, recorded in a place that so you can last as far as, as we can. And no doubt that the system, the more the technology advances, the more you can uh, make a much uh, longer time. That, that's for sure. So my wish is... Uh, that uh, a, a, anyone that will succeed will succeed as soon as possible because uh, I keep stand by the um, Cafe Society and a Wonder Wheel because uh, still, uh, even if in my contract I was supposed to do the civil master separation, I don't believe any longer the civil master separation is something for the lo long future from now on mm -hmm. because probably it will be not a laboratory that will be able to put it together, the three images exactly in sync uh, in the way that it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Even if I was pushing, uh, when uh, Italy uh, uh, government asked me to um, uh, remaster in all the Bernardo Bertolucci's film, uh, because I did uh, eight of them, and I said they will retiming, but I, I wanted preserving as well. Mm -hmm. So I was able to transfer all the film in uh, civil master separation and opti opt optical digital sound. So I don't think that DOTS has any problem to re record optical digital sound. Mm. Does, it doesn't, uh, it, it sounds very new to me, those kind of things. Anyhow, I know that what I done for Bertolucci still today is okay. 
But when any laboratory will disappear, how I can re record in those kind of films? So unless we have a system that we, have, that we can really make a, a serious, uh, um, in, in, you know, considering the, the, the digital era, which is something that uh, is moving pretty fast in developing the technology. So I hope really we can find, according to your system, that we become much faster in, in, in uh, find more um, deeper solution for recording everything, or whatever it is. Uh, that would be a, the major chance that we'll all have. Otherwise, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, all the movies that we can see today at Camera Image, uh, I don't know how many people spend the money today to transfer it from one um, support to another, uh, and um, there will be very few movies that will do that. To produce it today, does someone spend money for the, for the future? Because uh, they care for their own seat when they are sitting on that, that, that chair. That's what's happened to Kodak, and that's happened to Technicolor, and to many, many, many companies. Unfortunately, every chair looking for the li just a little garden in front of him. Uh, but we're supposed to take care to, the real, really, in the future generation, to transfer our information, yeah. our culture, and our industry, I hope. So, good luck. No, exactly, and, and this, is a, this is a point that in my book is going to make, is this, is this very thing that Vittorio is saying, is I want to be very clear that, I mean, what Stephen and I did, it didn't cost a lot of money. Actually, I, one thing I, I omitted to say is the cost of doing what we did was about approximately half the cost of the YCM separation. I'm talking about making four sets of copies of everything as we did was really not that much money. Now, I understand most movies don't have tens of thousands of dollars to throw away, and in my book I'm going to outline, as you were talking about, how to do it inexpensively, but if you just have some key elements, always make two or three copies of it, ne ne never less than two of these elements and store them separately, Th it's going to be able to come back in a few years. Do we have any questions from the audience? The microphones? Oh, right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, it's a, isn't much a question, but a consideration on the thought. Because as, as, as long as we, we become more fast in processing information in society, we become a fragmented society. Uh, I mean, information, we send thousands of pictures every day and emails, but we can then store them. So as long as we go further into digital uh, realm, F uh, farther away go from the, the physical stuff. So that's the problem with negative and the preservation in the future because there will be no labs anymore. Mm -hmm. But is there a way to um, understand which kind of medium, a solid medium, we can put our hands on to preserve a film to the next 50 years? Well, th that's exactly what, what, what I'm saying exactly. is, is that you know, there's something called millenni millen millennia data, which is Blu-ray discs that, that are, they only hold like 100 gigs, but they're made from some sort of rock, and they're claiming, and nobody's disagreeing with them, that they will last hundreds of years. That's good, except it's only 100 gigs. So I'm convinced that given the way storage is becoming cheaper, faster, and better so quickly, that LTO7 is not going to be the last thing, but it is very reliable, and that and that's why we're not going to go to LTO9. That's the last tape we're going to make. That we're going to hopefully go to something, those files that Jack did and that I did on May 3rd will go to some sort of inert medium that's playable. In other words, a solid state hard drive today is pretty good. It's not quite the specs that I would like as reliable, but it's getting there. And that's that certainly is the goal. And, and certainly something that doesn't be so sensitive to uh, magnetic sources? Well, no, but you, you, LTO7 energy, is really... It depends unless on energy a, and magnetic Yeah, but fields. unless you have an electromagnetic pulse, in which case we're all gone. So, I mean, I'm not worried about LTO tapes. They're very rugged. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes. Hey, um, a quick one just about the voice of this standardization. Do you think at this point however much the Academy can try and help, but do you think that possibly the filmmakers need to be the people that are pushing this and making this better, as opposed to it, as opposed to the Academy coming out with yet another digital dilemma? 
Well, you know, my, my, my dream about this is that the academy, because it used to be the academy had the, the academy aspect ratio, the one three seven five to one ratio that Vittorio used on, on one from the heart. It didn't care about what camera you had. It was, it was describing a ratio. And you could, no matter what camera, that's what, they, they described how you did the optical soundtrack. There was a standard they did. And I think if the Academy were to come out with a paper that would recommend this level of organization that could apply to a big movie or a small, I mean, I work on two minute short films. I work on 10 minute documentaries, all in addition to big movies. If they came out with a standard, and if film festivals like Toronto and Sundance and Seattle, if they s said, well, <clears throat> we're going to want items 3A and 4B when you deliver to us, and you say, what that? So you have to look up the Academy standard. I think that would be a way of getting it into filmmakers is they're being forced to do it. You know, that's, I don't know. This is a tough question. Questions? Another one from Another me. Another one. Yeah, here yes. in front. Right here. In front of Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, why did you chose uh, QuickTime uh, ProRes codec? That was what the um, people we were delivering to wanted, the foreign distributors did, um, uh, Amazon, Universal Studios, that's what they want. Uh, we also made an interoperable master format which, like I said, is this amazing thing that y'all should study because it allows twice the bandwidth of a DCP but it's designed for multiple home video versions. But it was only what's being used. What, what else could we have used? I'm just asking in yeah. of curiosity beca sure. because there's also DNxHR now from Avid because you have an Avid project and you were editing in Avid. Yeah, so. but the files were all starting with the God files at Technicolor. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, the IMF you were uh, talking about? Yes, sir. Uh, is it an open source codec or what, what, what is it? That's not a codec. Okay. That, that, that's just a, a, it's like a DCP. Okay. It's just a, a way of organizing data, but you all should really look into it because it's a DCP, but with a sort of like greater flexibility. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, one question for Mr. Blake and then one question for Senor Storaro, uh, Storaro if I can, please. Uh, first, uh, for Mr. Blake, what do you think or how do you see the role of director of photography in digitalization and the restoration process? Well, that, that is so crucial. It just breaks my heart when I've heard so many stories that films have been restored and have... N Vittorio and I at breakfast this morning heard a story from a, a top cinematographer. The idea that a cinematographer is not consulted, either a film they're making today or the restoration is just, it's crazy. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that. So I'm, the, again, my whole thing is to preserve their intent. That's everything. So I don't know how else to answer it other than I guess that we agree. Thank you. And uh, for Senor Storaro, um, <coughs> uh, in the process when you were digitalizing and restorating your films, uh, how did you approach, because now you have much more tools that you had before on the ordinary copy machine, did you use them? Did you make vignettes maybe, or masking something? Sorry, I don't, I'm so tired that I didn't, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't, uh, uh, sorry, I don't understand. Can, can you? That he did in, in Italy of his movies? Sorry? W which restorations are you referring to? Anyone that, oh. that Mr. Yeah. did. I don't understand what he says to I, me. I, I didn't understand it either, actually. I, I I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I can make it more simple, maybe. Uh, now, when you are uh, in the process of digitalizing and restorating films that you did uh, with Bertolucci, here. for example, uh, you, did m you have many more chances uh, to, to, uh, how to, say, to affect the picture than before. You can change the contrast, you can change this, you can change that, you can make masks. Right. So the question is, uh, if in restoring a movie, if you're using new technology, uh, how we can go back to the original images, oh. you see? No? no? Well, uh, I did, did, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yes, yes. That was I understood. Yeah. Well, that was I understood. <laughs> uh, you should never forget the cinema is always in progress. Any kind of idea that you can have uh, in the moment that you read the script, uh, probably you have the chance to change, uh, making more specific, more deeper concept while you're shooting. When you are having to timing, you can add something or more. Uh, at one moment, uh, Warren Beatty used to say, there is one moment where you abandoned the picture, in the sense that uh, you are about one moment, uh, the, uh, probably in your mind, in your lifetime, in your bonds, so you don't know anymore what to do. It's like when you write in a book, you think that at one moment uh, this is as far as you can go. For example, when I did the Bernardo Bertolucci retiming, uh, practically I, I found myself uh, with a great chance uh, in making uh, some improvement. Because uh, at that time, when I printed, there was no uh, the chance to remove something. For example, there is uh, one of the last shots that we did uh, on, uh, after um, the, the assassination of the teacher and his wife. And he went back to Rome, and we have the, the 1943, uh, the, 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 the this collapse of the fascist time. And he's go out uh, in, in front of the Castel Sant'Angelo uh, to meet his own uh, um, blind man, by blind friend. We were shooting through the entire night. At the last shot, it, dawn is arrived. And I do have the blue sky. And I don't want the blue at that moment because I, I, I use the blue in connection to the symbology of France, at Paris. And it was almost impossible to remove in normal uh, uh, printing, normal timing. There was still something over there. Finally, when I have it in, the, in, <laughs> in the computer, I was saying, take out that blue. <laughs> and I was feel very happy because finally I did it. So that's an example. Yeah. Many things. I mean, when you have the main concept of the picture, which is the most important thing, sir, according to the timing, you can uh, refine it, you can improve it, you can make a little thing. Um, very rarely, when you change the system, when Kodak changes on film, when the different developing so on, when the sound arriving compared to the silent picture, the beginning is always a kind of stop of the, of the creativity. The camera can move it when it was silent. Now the sound coming, they put the camera into a box. They don't have any movement. The color arriving, everybody was scared about uh, shadows. So you don't have any more the conflict between light and shadows. Later you pick up and so on and so on and so on. So at the beginning you, 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 you feel trapped when uh, you change the technology. Only when the digital arrived. Digital was only the problem was the level of quality but not the creativity. Because with digital intermediate, practically you can change the shot during the same shot, so the way that you can never do print in the normal film. And you can also do window, because uh, the, 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 the kind of number of uh, shade that you have in, uh, in, the, um, in the film, you don't have on, 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 the, on the electronic system. So that's why we do windows, so, so that you, have, you can put it down, the bright sky, you can lift up the shadows, or whatever. So every time that the technology go up, you can, I'm sure if I redo the um, HDR of the conformist today, I probably will take him down the first part of the fast. I will be very happy for the French uh, some, uh, segment because that's what I was looking for, to have some very primary color come out, you know. You know, I don't know, well, it happened because the story, the best, uh, as I mentioned today, uh, we were using uh, the wall to make a graffiti, we were using stone to make a mosaic, we been painting on wall, blah, blah, also in film. We use uh, the black and white film, and after we start to use a b uh, bichromatic color, and after we were tinting, after we arrive in the dye transfer, the imbibition system from Technicolor. And when, in 1975, Technicolor decided 
because the Kodak negative came out with the new printer, blah, blah. The maybe was not convenient that they stop the, the, in Italy, in England, in America to use the inhibition system. No doubt that the first uh, print that they, that they had for 1900, for example, the before were on dye transfer, didn't look the same. It was not so beautiful. There was not so kind of all thing because it's like when you're painting on wood, uh, you're painting on canvas. They absorb color in a different way. So you trap on that moment, uh, practically technical or dye transfer was the best, in my opinion, system ever in cinema. Not only because they were able to capture so many color tonality, but every print was permanent because the dye transfer didn't fade. I tell you just a little uh, uh, example. We did Apocalypse Now, we filmed it in 1976-77. And uh, the editing took two years. It was released in Cannes, the first screen in 1979, released in the late 79. And that was Apocalypse Now. 2000, 2001, I think, it was 22 years later, whatever. Uh, a French company pushing Francis to do a kind of a director's cut. Because they knew the Francis originally, in, in editing, put together the film that was almost five hours. In the first, you know, when you put all together, and after they shrink for many reasons. And uh, so Francis talked about, well, maybe we can do something. It's not necessarily that kind of putting together, the assembly of the film, but I can find some segment to put back. With Walter March, mm -hmm. edited, they put more 54 minutes. That was 2001. And um, Francis called me to come to Los Angeles to retiming the new material. And they said, well, we, uh, speaking with Walter, we decide to keep the original negative for Apocalypse Now, so we redo only the retiming in interpositive. We are going to edit the interpositive, it will come out with a new internegative, there will be Apocalypse Now Redux. And I was speaking with Dale Gran, great timer, great color supervisor in, in optical and in technical Los Angeles, wonderful guy. And I said, now, because the f negative is uh, 25 years old, almost 24, 25, whatever, I think we should use Premier Stock. Premier Stock from Kodak, uh, was uh, con the, they, they, they thought to put together because uh, somebody called it Ernesto Novelli in, in Rome, technical Rome, invented the ENR, Ernesto Novelli registration uh, system. And uh, practically they were redeveloping the soundtrack, uh, putting more silver and tonality into the image. So it became not only the three primary color plus percentage of black which was giving a kind of much better black, first of all. Second, there was the kind of uh, image was more kind of pictorial. It was like telling you no more, uh, you can have a chance to, um, uh, the level of the flash at the ENR, you can, you can do more different tonality, different poses, so, so on. So Kodak, uh, I, I said to Kodak, uh, I can use your film, but I have to add ENR. I can't live any longer with just your positive. They put uh, premier stock in order to have more silver into. So I said to Del Gran, okay, let's do the dailies, uh, all these 54 minutes re-edited uh, in premier. So at least we have a better black. They start screening when they were ready to print. I watched, they say, Dale, they made a mistake. This is the standard Kodak. He says, no, Vittorio, this is premier. No, I don't believe so. Look, there is no black. The black is gray. We told you it is premier. I don't believe that. He went, it cut a little piece of positive, show me written premier. <sighs> I say, oh my God, what I can do? What I can do? We cannot release this new picture because you can tell the difference. It, the product is not become something being re-edited, almost restored, whatever. Uh, about it. Now they've already a Cannes Festival, they were waiting for us to open the festival for the new Apocalypse Now Redux. 
And uh, they'll tell me, Vittorio, you know that we are trying to put back the inhibition system. Why we don't try to see how it look like in the inhibition? So they, they give me a role of, of um, a sample test. <sighs> It was beautiful. The chance, the matrix has to read the color tonality into the negative was a ten, 100 times better than just an interpositive, or even the normal print from negative to positive, which I was doing. And finally, I saw all the tonality plus the black. And I say, great, can we edit matrix? They say, no. You have to re-edit in the negative roll by roll, and we can give you roll by roll. And I said to Ron Jarvis, Ron Jarvis was the president at that time of Technical, that was believing at that time. Metrics were reinvented again, because at that moment there was uh, some kind of uh, way of the some company, in order to receive money back very fast, they were printing 6,000 print, 3,000, 5,000. The best system, they can give you as fast as you can, and less expensive was the metric system. A technical lost. Anyhow, I saw the person, but this is the way that we're supposed to do it. So I went to Ron Jarvis and said, Ron, this is the first chance that we have to represent the inhibition system all around the world. Can you help me? What do you need? I need to tell Zoetrop Studio does this cost exactly the same money if we do an interpositive, internegative? Done. To me, the, the publicity I have back from Apocalypse Now Redux is much more than what I, I, I can lose. It. I called Francis and Francis, I need to speak with you. Okay, I'm waiting for you tomorrow. I went from Los Angeles to San Francisco. I sit down with Francis. I explain him everything. And I say, Francis, so beautiful, you cannot believe. Much better than the original material. Because that's, is, they can read so many tonalities inside that you cannot believe. Plus, it's permanent. Doesn't fade. But will cost a fortune. I say, I already spoke with the, the president of Technical. They give it to us exactly the same expense of the normal interpositive, inter, internegative, a print, a one print. Oh, that's great. But uh, uh, can we edit it together? No, Francis. That's the only thing why I came over here. We should recut the negative because some sequences are part of different roles. It's not just one segment. He said, well, we were thinking to, to preserve the original negative. Francis, Apocalypse Now has at least one interpositive or an internegative in each different country. The negatives nobody is using any longer. He's already done his own time. Practically, it's keep going, fading slowly, my fade the negative, and nobody is using. So why, uh, why we cannot use it? Well, we know we were so accustomed to the original material. I say, Francis, let's be honest between me and you. <coughs> Which kind of movie you want to show to your nephew 40 years, 30 years from now? Apocalypse Now Redux. That's the answer. He said, Walter, <laughs> lesson to Vittorio. And we redid Apocalypse Now Redux in Matrix. And after I did also a Bulwark, and, and I don't remember which one I did, I did three movie. It was fantastic, and they lost it. So unfortunately, they, they, they instead to put it together, their brain, with his brain, they can do a digital system, I'm sure, converting the image in this way, that they can, all today, we can have a screening on the, the material that was permanent, uh, and restored the, and, uh, per, uh, and uh, put in, in the vaults in, without any problem. So instead of thinking to renew the system, they stop the system. That's my problem. So good luck with your system. <laughs> yeah, Victoria, one, one, one second. I, I want to ask a question here. How many people here, I'm going to change the subject completely. How many people here are looking to become cinematographers? A lot, or, 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 or already are cinematographers. OK, now this is completely changing the subject here. I think we can agree that this gentleman right here 
knows how to photograph an image. We can agree, right? Okay, yeah, okay. Now, when you're on the set and you're doing sound for a movie, a, too crazy of a number of cinematographers just do not care about sound and do not give the sound people any chance to, to, to get an image out correctly. A buddy of mine who's a boom operator, I don't know if you remember Joe Brennan, he worked on many movies with Vittorio, and I asked him a few years ago, who are some of the favorite people you've ever worked with? And the top of his list was Vittorio. And I said, you have to be kidding me. The great images that, because he worked on Dick Tracy and on um, um, sh sheltering, sheltering, jo Joe did that too? No, 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 I'm talking about the movies, the movies that Joe worked on him with, and um, Tucker. And I said, well, that's great to hear. He said he was, that Vittorio had lit a scene on Dick Tracy, and then Joe put his boom in to just to check where shadows were. And Vittorio's looking at him and goes, Joe, it's not good for you, it's not good for me. And also, on Bullworth, he was doing camera tests on Bullworth, and he told the producers to bring Joe and Tommy, his production mixer, in to see how the lighting in the limo, which was such a large part of the movie, would affect the sound. So can some of you take this to heart, that you can help the sound people and still make beautiful images? Just think that. Okay, I think we're good for now. Thank you so much.